Artificial intelligence, it's come a long way. AI used to be the ultimate villain in movies, a force wanting to wipe out humanity. But now armies want it as a sidekick. On Tuesday, representatives from several nations met in Seoul for the Re-AIM Summit. It stands for Responsible AI in the Military Domain. The first edition took place in Amsterdam last year. Several nations attended. 60 of them endorsed a call to action. But it was just a statement with no legal commitments. This time, they've gone one step further. They've endorsed a blueprint to govern the use of AI in militaries. This blueprint has some practical guidelines. But again, it's not legally binding. One of the most powerful messages emerging from this summit is the importance of collaboration and international cooperation. AI technologies, while holding tremendous potential, also present complex ethical security and governance challenges. None of us, ladies and gentlemen, can address these challenges alone. Now, the blueprint aims to create guardrails, frameworks that monitor the military application of artificial intelligence. But not everyone is buying it. Like China. Beijing sent a representative to the summit, but it did not back the document. Same with India. It did not endorse the call to action in The Hague, and it hasn't said anything about the blueprint in Seoul. So New Delhi is not fully convinced. Clearly, the world is not on the same page on this one, which brings us to some very basic questions, like how does it work? How is AI being used in warfare? What are the risks? And is the use of artificial intelligence a blessing or a threat? Let's look at the uses first. Artificial intelligence is not new to warfare. It's already an integral part of it. On one side is the, is the technical stuff, your basic maintenance and logistics. Artificial intelligence helps, helps take care of that. Let me show you this recent study. It looks at A-10C warplanes. AI can predict when they need repair. And that could save America nearly $25 million every month. Then there are the boring tasks, like going through files. No human truly enjoys it. So the US Army is delegating it to AI. It has a model that can go through 140,000 personnel files, 140,000 files. It gives them scores for promotion. So AI does help in menial jobs. But what about the battlefield? Well, it's being used there too. From Ukraine to Gaza, AI is already reshaping warfare. We're talking about AI-powered drones, automatic sensors, and even autonomous decision-making tools. Some militaries see it as a plus, and it does have advantages, like faster decision-making, precise targeting, and reduced human risk. That makes AI the new frontier of warfare. But there's a catch, too. On paper and in, in, in algorithms, it sounds very good. But in a war, it could go either way. Take Lavender, for example. It's an AI-driven system being used by Israel. Lavender has the name of nearly every resident in Gaza. It combines this information with other data to determine if someone is a Hamas militant or not. At one point, it had identified 37,000 targets, 37,000 individuals. The problem is, it has a 10% error rate, which means all of this is supposed to be reviewed by a human too, but you don't often have that luxury in a war. So there's serious collateral damage. Here's one more example. In 2020, a killer drone hunted down and killed soldiers in Libya. They were fleeing fighters. So the AI drone attacked human targets. But no human was consulted for the strike. It acted autonomously. And that makes it quite dangerous. AI can be good at locking targets, but it's often unable to distinguish between a threat and an innocent. And that leaves room for error. In a war, this can be fatal. Also, there's an ethical question here. If the machine makes a mistake, who is responsible? Is it the machine, or the person who designed it, or the army who deployed it? Who do you blame in a scenario like that? Another chilling possibility, the use of AI in nuclear warfare. One wrong move, and millions could be at risk. AI can pose various risks such as unintended escalation during conflict, failures resulting from algorithm, algorithmic or systemic bias, and potentially devastating misalignment with human intent. So there are a lot of risks, 
But AI is the future, so countries will have to move with the times. What they need right now is two things. First is human oversight. Sure, AI can predict a target, but it must be reviewed by humans who then take the final call. The second is well-tested AI. Any deployment must be thoroughly reviewed. There's no place for half-baked technology in a war, because on the battlefield, it's the difference between life and death.